Hi guys and welcome to Motor Beam. This is the Toyota Urban Cruiser High Rider, which costs 22.45 lakhs on road Mumbai, and this is the Volkswagen Tiguan GT DSG, which costs 22.06 lakh on road Mumbai. Let's compare both of these two and uh, help you decide which one to buy. So let's get started with the engines of both the cars first. We'll move on to the High Rider first. So this is the strong hybrid version which I have with me, and uh, this is the engine of the car. This is powered by 1.5 liter three-cylinder engine. This makes 91 horsepower from the engine and 79 horsepower from the motor and 122 newton meters of torque. This is made it to a CVT. And uh, if we move on to the engine of the Tiguan, this is the top of the line GT variant. So this is the GT variant and this is powered by 1.5 liter TSI engine, four-cylinder unit, unlike the three-cylinder engine on that car. And this is made it to a seven-speed DSG. The claim mileage on this is 17.8 kilometers per liter and 27.97 kilometers per liter on the strong hybrid urban cruiser. So yeah, on paper this is much more efficient and probably in reality too. But uh, let's check out the exteriors of both the cars first. So this is based on Suzuki's global platform and this is based on Volkswagen Skoda's MQB A0 Ion platform. And uh, coming to the lights of both the cars. You get LED lights on the Tiguan, and even the Urban Cruiser gets LED projectors. So you get nice quality lights on both the cars. But at night, both of them are not very effective, and both the cars get LED indicators also. These look a bit more stylish. The Tiguan actually looks quite simple in comparison. It looks minimalistic. This one has a lot more funky design elements, and uh, the Tiguan has very useful halogen fog lamps over here. There are no fog lamps available on the Urban Cruiser High Rider. Now coming to the ground clearance of both the cars, the Tiguan has a ground clearance of 188 millimeters. This one has a clearance of 210 millimeters, which is massive. So you can have a look at the designs of both the cars. Let me know in the comment section below which one do you like more. The Tiguan also has a similar blue color, which is which was launched recently, but this is the bright curcuma yellow color, which grabs a lot of attention. Coming to the dimensions of both the cars, the Urban Cruiser High Rider is longer, taller, wider than the Tiguan, but the Tiguan's wheelbase is 51 millimeters longer than that of the Urban Cruiser High Rider. The Tiguan also gets LED indicators on the mirrors. This one also gets LED indicators over here. The Tiguan has a normal sunroof. This one has a massive dual pane panoramic sunroof. Coming to the tire sizes, the Tiguan has 205, 55, 17 tires, and you get red colored brake calipers because this is the GT variant. And on the High Rider, you get 215, 60, 17 tire sizes. On the Tiguan, you get drum brakes at the rear. On this car, you get rear disc brakes. This is the rear section of both the cars. The Tiguan visibly looks smaller than the Urban Cruiser High Rider. The design of both the cars is quite funky at the rear actually, and uh, both the cars get very catchy looking tail lights. So this is a close look of the tail lights of the Urban Cruiser High Rider. This is the badging over here, and the Tiguan gets GT badging, Tiguan badging over here, and this Infinity LED strip. The Tiguan gets halogen indicators. This one also gets halogen indicators, and the reverse lamp is placed over here. And uh, talking about the boot. The Tiguan has a pretty decent 385 liter boot, and uh, you can access the spare wheel from here. It is a full size spare wheel, but uh, there is no alloy wheel. This is a steel rim. The Tiguan also has a 60/40 split rear seat, and uh, coming to the boot of the Urban Cruiser High Rider, because this is a strong hybrid variant, the boot is quite small. This is just 265 liters, which is much smaller than that of even you know regular sized hatchbacks. There is some storage area over here, and the toolkit is placed over here. The spare wheel is placed below the car. So I hope you got a nice view of the spare wheel of the car. Thank you, Daniel. So this was a basic idea about the designs of both the cars. The Urban Cruiser High Rider has a fuel tank capacity of 45 liters. The Tiguan has a fuel tank capacity of uh, 50 liters. Both the cars that we have here are the dual tone variants. Both the cars have a shark fin antenna also. And I guess that's about it for the exteriors. Let's jump into the cabin of the High Rider first. So let's get inside the High Rider, and uh, this is the top of the line variant. So it has all the bells and whistles, and the car is actually on right now, but it's not making any sort of commotion. Let me just adjust the seat to my seating position and shut this power window along with the sunroof. Okay, here's a clear look at the dual pane sunroof. This opens up. Really big, so if you want some air inside the cabin, some sunlight inside the cabin, or if you want just someone to spit from a bus inside the car, you can open this up fully. But make sure no one comes out of the sunroof when the car is moving. It can be really dangerous. So, इसको बंद कर देते पहले. And uh, yeah, that's it. So this is the cabin of the Urban Cruiser High Rider. 
it looks very nice actually the design is extremely good of course it is very similar to the maruti grand vitara the center console is extremely similar to that and uh, the steering wheel is also you know shared with a lot of maruti cars you have seen this steering wheel on a lot of cars before i can guarantee that so these are the buttons on the steering wheel uh, you know these are the audio controls these are the cruise control functions and this is for changing the track you get the call answer receive and you know reject buttons over here this is for the voice commands the steering wheel actually feels quite nice the leather wrap feels you know really good and this car is actually brand new it has done probably around 1200 kilometers on the auto because i drove it down from bangalore to mumbai just a couple of days back and it had come out straight from the factory so this is the center console of the car again these switches are shared with the you know maruti baleno the ac control switches and uh, the touch screen is also shared with a lot of maruti cars it is good the touch screen let me just increase the brightness the screen is actually quite good in quality and the fluidity is also very nice and the sound quality from the speakers is just about okay it is actually very okay on both the cars not that great probably 7.5 or 8 out of 10 on both the cars this is the auto dimming irvm over here you get this mirror with a light and likewise over here as well and on this dashboard you get a lot of hard plastics at the top this portion is covered with a soft touch material which looks nice and the color theme is also quite good this is the glow box of the car not very big in size it is medium in size and uh, it has a decent capacity you get a wireless charging pad over here this is the gear knob of the car p r n d b modes b of course because this is a strong hybrid this car also has a pure ev mode which can be accessed through this button over here this is the drive mode selector this has normal mode eco mode and power mode ventilated seats on this car wow Sadly, the Tiguan which I have with me does not have ventilated seats. Even though this is the top of the line variant, I don't know why. And uh, here's a close look at the instrument cluster of the car. So this is also very clear in terms of quality. It showcases a lot of information. And uh, you know, okay, the car has done one, two, three, five kilometers, which is not a lot. I finished the run-in period of this car. And yeah, talking about the instrument cluster, it is actually very nice in quality. Showcases a lot of information, and it is you know. very easy to read and uh, same is the case of the instrument cluster of the tiguan which i shall show you in a bit this is the wiper control stock over here and this is the basic headlight control stock as i mentioned before no fog lamps on this car and uh, one thing i wanted to show you guys this car has a lot of dummy buttons over here so i don't know what these buttons are for lot of dummy buttons over here also and a few of them over here also apart from the traction control off button none of these buttons work you get a normal usb port over here and a 12 volt charging socket over here you get this uh, 360 view camera uh, you know for toggling the camera views as you can see this is a grand vitara not an urban cruiser high rider in this photo over here uh, in this graphic over here and uh, let's have a look if let's see if we can see the tiguan in this okay so we'll figure that out later but uh, yeah this is a grand vitara so we'll shut that uh, this is for uh, toggling the hud and this is for you know increasing the increasing or decreasing the angle or the brightness of the hud so let's open up the hud it opens up like this i personally don't use the hud much i find it a bit too intrusive and uh, yeah i cannot keep looking at it while driving the hud's on premium cars are much better executed so this one yeah it's okay not that great and i personally prefer keeping it off and playing around with the angle of the display you can have a look at if you can see it yes you can see it now but yeah i don't find the hud of much use so i'll shut it right now in goes the hud and uh, this is the you know this is the power window switch control module over here so you get very basic switches auto up down only for the driver side window lock and lock button and orvm adjustment all of these buttons are lifted from other multi cars which are lower down the price spectrum so i guess that's about it on uh, the front seats yeah they are very comfortable i drove this car for 1000 km and we took just a couple of breaks and i found them to be very comfortable the headrest is quite tall in size the seat itself is nice wide and supportive the quality of the posture is very good and yeah overall for long drives the seat offers a very good amount of comfort and support even for you know big sized adults the quality of the roof liner is good it is decent but uh, yeah i think i need to show you something the quality of this <laughs> look at this this is so thin 
and it is actually useless in the heat because when the sun is right above the car the sun still filters inside the cabin and yeah this could have been you know slightly better in quality and probably if some kid is just playing around with this he might just rip it off so that could be possible and yeah i think toyota and maruti both of them could have offered a better quality sunshade over here so that's about it uh, let's move on to the cabin of the tiguan now but before we move on to the cabin of the tiguan let me just show you the storage spaces this car has to offer so you get a couple of cup holders over here and even the bottle holder is uh, wide enough on the doors of the urban cruiser high rider you get a 1 liter bottle holder over here and some storage areas over here and this armrest can also be adjusted it can also be opened up to free up some space over here and uh, this is the key of the car ignore the sticker but it is exactly the same key that you get on every maruti car right from the celerio to the breza and even the grand vitara so yeah time to move on to the tiguan so let's get inside the tiguan now this is my long term test car actually i've been driving it daily for almost 2 months now more than 2 months actually so it is very familiar and the seat is in my seating position already isko band kar dete hain and uh, let's start the car so the tiguan start stop button is placed over here the kushak's button and the slavia's button is placed somewhere over here let's switch off the auto uh, start stop feature and even the ac so the tiguan also feels quite nice the interior is very good this has to be opened up manually and the sunroof isn't very big in size but it's okay it adds a nice vibe to the cabin you can have a look at the layout of the cabin over here very nicely designed cabin the urban cruiser and the grand vita look very very funky in comparison this one looks simple and minimal stick but it does the job really well and wow the driving position is actually very nice on this car in fact even on the toyota the seating position is very good but somehow i just like the functional cabin of this car very clean and very easy to locate all the controls so this is the steering wheel much different than what we have seen on the polo vento rapid earlier and this is the digital instrument cluster which is shared with the vortas and the slavia and of course even the kushak monte carlo so you can toggle through the displays uh, using these buttons over here you can you know have a look at whatever information you want to see lot of display options and and uh, we'll move on to the touch screen now even the touch screen is actually very nice you know it also showcases the right car and like that one that we saw uh, so this is the tiguan of course this is the global spec and not the india spec model over here so yeah technically right car wrong model and it showcases all the driving information since start since morning i've driven this car for 8 km it has given me 8.9 km per liter took me 49 minutes okay because we are shooting and uh, since refueling i've got 11.3 km per liter which is actually very nice because this is a power house a 1.5 liter engine overall in 1872 km since the time i started driving this car i've got 9.5 km per liter the screen is nice but it has some issues so sometimes what happens is that my phone keeps getting disconnected for some reason i have an iphone 12 i use wireless carplay a lot of times while listening to music or while answering calls the phone gets disconnected for no reason sometimes what happens is that when you switch the car to reverse uh, the parking camera of course comes up and after i switch the car back to neutral or to you know drive the screen goes blank right now it did not happen but a lot of times happens and uh, for that i have to stop the car shut it down open the door close it and then restart the car and then the issue gets solved but yeah that's about it this car has ambient lighting i'm not sure if you can see it okay you can see it even the urban cruiser high rider has a subtle ambient lighting and this is the glow box slightly bigger than that of the urban cruiser high rider this is also a cool glow box The build quality on both the cars is very very decent actually. The Tiguan has got a five star safety rating. That one hasn't got a safety rating yet. And even though the Tiguan feels very nicely built, the doors make a lot of squeaking noises all the time. So the I'll just show it to you. This trip over here, this actually makes all those noises. And uh, this issue is found on almost every MQB A0 Ion car. I think even customers of these cars will be able to relate with me. So the car had gone for service recently, and uh, they applied WD40 or something, I guess. And the sound disappeared for a few days, but now it is back, and it gets annoying when you are not listening to music. This car also has an auto dimming RPM. Over here, there is no mirror, no light, nothing of that sort. It is there on the high rider. Uh, these are the cabin lights, nice LED lights. and oh yeah you get this mirror there's no cover for the mirror no light as well and uh, this is nothing okay so 
the grab handles feel nice the do the seat belts aren't high adjustable and the seat is also very good on the tiger of course this car does not have any sort of leather upholstery fabrics all around hard touch materials all around so yeah the urban cruiser gets leather upholstery it feels a bit more premium and i think that car also has a couple of extra features like a 360 view camera and ventilated seats this one also has a lot of dummy buttons and if you had a kushak with you you'd probably have ventilated seat buttons somewhere over here or here i guess but uh, on the tiger they offer ventilated seats only on the 1 liter top line variant but on the 1.5 gt dsg at 22 lakhs you don't get that feature this is the seat of the car again this is also very nice and comfortable and uh, i spend a lot of cars in this car in traffic every day in mumbai you know how bad mumbai traffic is and i really like the you know comfort the seats offer so that's about it for the cabin of the tiger of course you get some storage spaces this also has a wireless mobile charging pad this does not have any regular usb port you get type c ports everywhere two type c over here and this is a 12 volt charging socket this is the gear selector knob and a couple of storage spaces over here this is the key of the car similar to a lot of vw and skoda cars that we have seen recently and you get a couple of cup holders over here this also opens up and this has the key of some maruti okay this is probably the grand vitara we have the high rider behind with us no this is the celerio and the armrest can also be adjusted this actually has leather upholstery but uh, nowhere else in the car you get that so that's about it let's jump into the rear seat of the tiger and then the rear seat of the urban cruiser high rider getting in the rear seat of the tiger first and uh, this is a look at the bottle holder of the car this is big in size you get a single power window switch over here and uh, let's get inside so the polo vento wrap it used to get auto up down power windows for all four windows but on the mqb a0 and cars you can get this feature only for the driver side window here's a look at the clean dashboard of this car i really like this and uh, you get ac vents over here two type c ports over here also and some storage areas behind the front seats you get nice two cabin led lights over here and the space is actually decent on this car the car isn't very wide uh, you know as wide as the creta or the seltos or even the urban cruiser high rider but it is decent it is the perfect size for urban commuting two people can sit here comfortably and there is space for a middle passenger also of course not a lot of space but decent space knee room you can have a look the seat is adjusted to my driving position and there is a fair amount of knee room left over here headroom is also more than enough and uh, this car has three adjustable headrests so i'll just show it to you one two three adjustable headrests this thing opens up two cup holders over here you get isofix style seat mounts six airbags on both the cars i'm waiting for the safety rating of the urban cruiser high rider to come out and that's about it so the angle of the backrest is very nice on the tiger it is comfortable and the contours over here these contours you know add to the support that is offered to the passenger so this is very nicely done only thing is that the cabin could have felt a bit more premium right now it feels basic i mean it does the job really well but some more premiumness in the cabin would have been much better so uh, let's go into the rear seat of the urban cruiser high rider now so this is the door of the urban cruiser high rider see noticeably this looks and feels much more premium because of the leather upholstery and this piano black finish uh inlay which is actually a scratch magnet you get a speaker over here and the bottle holder is smaller than that of the tiger i am now seated in the car knee room is actually similar to that of the tiger not a lot of difference but this headrest you can see is much taller and the vibe in the cabin feels much more premium lots of soft soft touch materials over there hi danil and uh, even the upholstery the door pads all of these things get leather upholstery you get two small ac vents over here and you get a type c port and a normal usb port at the rear the this is the control for the ac vents you get storage spaces behind the front seats and three adjustable headrests even here and a nice three point seat belt for the middle passenger which is an excellent thing the armrest opens nice and wide you get two cup holders even here and the the shape of the seat is actually very good the shape is better on the tiger the upholstery and the feel and the comfort is slightly better on the urban cruiser high rider all of these things they feel a bit flat the tiger has better contouring so yeah that's about it i think on long drives the tiger will feel a bit more comfortable but this one has slightly better space at the rear so i guess that's about it even this car has six airbags and uh, let's get driving now yes 
this is a clear look at the dual pane sunroof it opens up massively so even this panel opens up and uh, considering how indians love sunroofs this could be one of the biggest usps of this car so let's get driving and uh, i'll start off with the urban cruiser high rider first and then drive the tiguan and then i'll tell you which one to buy so i'm at the wheel of the urban cruiser high rider now and as i mentioned before this is the strong hybrid variant meaning it gets a 1.5 liter engine from toyota this part in comes from toyota the one on the mild hybrid variant the k15c engine that one comes from maruti but both the cars the grand vitara and the toyota urban cruiser high rider both of them are made at toyota's plant in karnataka so this engine is a three cylinder unit it makes 91 horsepower from the engine and from the motor you get around 79 horsepower and this one makes 122 newton meters of torque the car is very silent very refined and does not feel like a three cylinder car and right now it is at 30 kilometers per hour running in ev mode so yeah this is the benefit of the urban cruiser high rider when you drive this car in traffic it rewards you with brilliant fuel economy in fact when you drive this car on the highway you'll probably get around 20 to 21 kilometers per liter in the city this will actually give you 25 kilometers per liter that is a possibility and you can probably go thousand kilometers on a single tank of fuel now the initial punch from this engine is decent and the car offers smooth drivability of course it is not as punchy as the tygoon on and uh, not as fun to drive as the tygoon but it is very nice and uh, you know it is it offers a smooth driving experience so don't expect a lot of excitement from this car but you can expect smooth drive from this car and the whole hybrid operation works very smoothly on this car so when the car switches from the motor to the engine or back to the motor the whole thing happens very smoothly and you do not feel it but of course you can have a look at that in the touch screen over here it shows you so right now the car is running off battery it is running in EV mode so and I'll just dab the accelerator and now the car is running from the engine's power also so this is the charge remaining in the battery the more you drive the car in traffic the more you brake the more you charge the battery of this car that is how the hybrid system works and this car of course has an ev mode button also but it does not work a lot of times so when you press this it says ev mode unavailable even though the car is running in ev mode right now so this thing is there and this car gets uh, three driving modes normal eco mode and power mode in power mode the ev mode is you know it does not come up a lot and the punch offered in the power mode is actually very good in eco mode the performance feels a bit dulled down and in normal mode the car offers the best reliability so i usually prefer using the normal mode on this car only so i guess that's about it okay so the urban cruiser high rider feels easy to drive uh, the controls are very light visibility is good from the outside and the steering is also very light easy to park the car and it does not offer a lot of feel and feedback even at high speeds but the high speed stability is very good on this car and you can corner it hard it offers a lot of confidence to the driver but somehow it does not feel very engaging to drive the suspension even though it is comfortable it feels a bit stiff over sharp potholes and bumps so all of these things are felt in the cabin of the urban cruiser high rider and the braking performance is decent the brakes even though this even though this car has a disc brakes at the rear i find the braking performance of the tygoon to be better so that's about it i think i've told you enough about the high rider and uh, let's start driving the tygoon now so let's get started with the Tygoon now and even though this is a 4 cylinder engine this one actually makes more noise than that of the Urban Cruiser High Rider. Of course it does not have a lot of vibrations, there are barely any vibrations actually but the doors make a lot of squeaking noises. So coming to the performance, this engine offers very good grunt, I mean 150 horsepower, 250 Nm, meters. that is much more than what the Toyota offers over here and the sense speed DSG is also very nice. So at low speeds around 20-30 km per hour, there is some jerkiness which is felt from the car but after that it is smooth, it is butter smooth and it flies. So this 1.5 litre engine also has a cylinder deactivation technology meaning when you're driving the car uh, easily just you know cruising around it drives on two cylinders to help you save some fuel and it actually works very nicely and this car is actually delivering good fuel economy numbers out on the highways i've been getting 14 15 kilometers per litre which is extremely good and and while the low end lag is felt a bit before the turbo kicks in it is felt a bit more on the 1.5 compared to the one litre engine on the tygoon but again the mid-range surges too good and this car accelerates like nothing else so it can actually give you know slightly more expensive cars also a run for their money with the kind of performance that this car offers and even at red line this engine does get a bit noisy but it has oodles of grunt so yeah there's a lot of punch in the engine of this car and that makes the driving experience so much more exciting so yes in terms of the fun to drive factor and the excitement the tygoon is better than the urban cruiser high rider that one is aimed more at you know sedate driving and comfort and uh, fuel economy 
and so realistically on that car you'll get a lot more fuel economy around 10 kilometers per liter more than the Tygoon but yeah you give some you lose some so that's about it now the suspension on the Tygoon is also a bit on the stiffer side and the bumps are felt a bit more on this compared to the Urban Cruiser High Rider and this one also has this uh, tendency to thud around when you go you know a bit hard on potholes and undulations even in terms of AC there is some room for improvement of course the AC cools nicely but you have to reduce the temperatures a lot compared to any other Japanese car so right now I've put this at 18.5 and the cooling is okay right now uh, on the Urban Cruiser High Rider it was at 22 and we were feeling cold in the car so that is the case with any Japanese or Indian car the ACs are much more powerful on those cars but yeah with the recent update Volkswagen has sorted out the AC issues so that is not a major concern as such but yeah I just thought I'll mention it to you in terms of handling the Tygoon is better than the Urban Cruiser High Rider the steering has slightly better feel and feedback the high speed stability on this car is also rock solid drive it at any speed on the highway the car will remain glued to the tarmac and it will offer you a lot of grins also the body roll on this car is very well controlled it is actually negligible because of the stiffer setup of the car and you know you can have a lot of fun with this car on the guards also it does not feel like an suv to drive around of course this is not a full-size suv it is a compact suv but again it has excellent road manners so yeah i think i look forward to driving the tygoon every day and even the braking performance is quite good on this car even though it has drums at the rear but still the braking is better than that of the high rider so which one should you buy the toyota urban user high rider or the volkswagen tygoon so this one is more comfort oriented it has like a couple of extra features over the tygoon and it offers a lot more fuel economy so if that is a priority go for the high rider you won't be disappointed it is a fairly nice family car and offers japanese reliability also this one is more fun to drive it also has a decent list of features and most importantly this also has a five star safety rating if fun is on your priority list get the tygoon if efficiency and comfort are on your list get the high rider my personal pick would be the volkswagen tygoon gt dsg